How's it going guys? In this video we're going to go over reaction rates and specifically we'll calculate the rate of formation and the rate of consumption for a few different reactions. Now this is the formula that we're going to use and um, I think I'm just going to jump right in and we can, we can get better at it as we go. Here's our first one. Okay, consider the reaction 2N2O5 yields 4NO2 plus O2. So if the rate of formation of NO2 is 2.0 mole per minute what is the rate of consumption of N2O5 and the rate of formation of O2? So the best way to start this out is um, put it into the formula. So the formula where we're going to use is, I'll start with the negative 1 over 2 times delta and 205 over our change in T. It's going to equal our one fourth times change in NO2. I mean, the, I'm sorry, the change in concentration of NO2 over change in time equals it's going to be 1 over 1 of um, times change in concentration of O2 over change in T. Alright cool so now that we have this um, another thing is that in sometimes in, in these types of problems you're going to have to draw them or you'll be asked to draw um, what it would look like on a graph um, so in this case, I just wanted to take a chance to, to draw it out because I think that it's probably helpful to know. Um, so in this case, um, we have here this graph. I'm just trying to make sure it's in the frame here. Um, we'll have concentration on one side on the Y and then time on the X. We're looking at, we have three different things here, but uh, I think the the main thing to look at is we're gonna we're gonna use the moles to to assume what the concentrations are changing at. So first of all, um, our NO2 is what we have four moles of, so we're gonna have the most of it. Um, that's gonna end and and on this side I just did a couple of dashes, but we'll just assume those are moles. Up here I'm gonna actually switch to my uh, this one. We have our NO2 up top. And it's going to all the way up here. Um, and because it's a, a product, we're going to assume we start with none. So we can kind of draw that kind of curve for NO2. Now for our O2, um, we have just one mole to end. Um, so we're going to kind of follow along here, put that there. And then we're going to also, because it's a product, assume we start with none. So there we go. Now what about our um, reactant, the N2O5. We have two moles of that. So we'll start here and then as, as, you know, at the end of the reaction we have none left. So we're going to go from here to here. So in this case we can go kind of like that. And that, that one there is going to be, like I said, the N2O5. So that's just kind of some uh, food for thought, so to speak. I'll just draw these dotted lines across there. Um, just something to think about. Sometimes you'll have to answer questions based on that. So you'll have to derive the, the formula based on these lines here. And um, just, just you know, I think if you try to think it out logically, the concentration, if it starts at zero, it's probably a product. Um, and if it starts as something, that means it's a reactant. And then you just use the rest to derive the moles. Uh, but sorry, that was kind of a detraction from this question. Um, let me scoot this down and we'll, we'll get further on here. Um, so now we can kind of break this down. Um, we have negative one half times our change in N205 over our change in T equals one fourth of 2M per minute because that's what we're given. Um, and now we're gonna just kind of make this, take it another step further, 
triangle N205 over delta T equals negative one mole per minute. So we, we kind of just distributed that. And then finally what we can take is our delta, our change in O2, sorry, over our change in T. It's going to equal 0 0.50 mole per minute. Um, because that was just straight out of this. We're, we're, this is a 4 and then that's a 1. So we're just going to have, now we have our rates. Uh, and that's you know what what you could also use for this. I mean these these should equate to this. So we have you know the the four or the the, the one over four. We have the negative one, um, and then the, the 0 0.5. So um, you, if you multiply each of these by two, it's it kind of works out to be the same as the the moles that they start with. So it's it's it might not always be that the, you know that case, but I think in this in this way it's you know pretty pretty convenient. So let's see if we answer the question. Uh, what is the rate of consumption of N2O5 and the rate of formation of O2? It looks like we got both of those. All right, so let's let's move on to the next one. Scoot this down. All right, so consider the balanced hypothetical reaction 3A plus 2B yields C plus 2D. Um, okay, so, and then we're, we have multiple parts here. Express the average rate of the reaction with respect to each reactant and product. Um, in the first 30 seconds of the reaction, the concentration of A dropped from 2, uh, 0.2 molar to 0.046 molar. What is the average rate of the reaction? And then what will be the change to D based on the question B? So let's just, uh, you know, let's get going on this. So first off, for A, um, let's just plug it right in. It's asking for the average rate. So we'll just apply the formula. Um, so that is going to be negative delta A. It's kind of convenient, too, because the, the variables are also the same as the letters. But um, the, in this case, it's going to be over 3 delta t, or change in t, equals minus, again, a negative, and then we have b over, for b it's going to be 2 delta t equals, I think the, the cool thing about these are that you can, um, the, the, sorry, is, is that um, because each one is equal, like each section is equal to the other, you can, it's, it's pretty easy to derive things, um, you know, from each other. Like having one can help you get all of them, uh, just using kind of the ratios, which I think is pretty cool. So, yep, that's our answer. It's not too bad for part A. And now we're going to go on to part B. In the first 30 seconds of the reaction, A dropped from 0.2 to 0.046. What is the average rate? So what we're going to now do is sub in rate equation. So it was good that they asked us these questions in this order because now what we can do is we can just substitute that in to the rate equation. Um, so we're going to have our rate is equal to negative a over 3 triangle T it's going to equal now we're going to have the actual numbers here so we're going to have um, on top and again make sure you you, you keep in mind it's ne there's it's a, always a negative on the um, on the reactant side so it's negative and then in parentheses um, 0 0.046 minus 0 0.200 over 3 times 30 seconds. Equals negative. All right, so here's what we're going to do. 
we have negative 0.154m over 3 times 30 is 90 seconds. And um, from there, we can just work this out. Um, we got our numbers here. We're going to have... What I got was 0 0.0017111, which we'll say is 1.71 times 10 to the negative 3 um, mole per second. All right, cool. So that is, okay, so it's asking what is the average rate of the reaction? It looks like this is going to be our average rate of the reaction. So we answered part B. Now we're on to part C. What will be the, the change to D? Okay, so for part C, we're going to do one of these. T over 2, T. And now basically what we're going to do is we're going to solve for that. So equals... 1.71 times 10 to the negative 3 times 2 times 30 seconds equals all right so what we got for that is the change in D is going to equal 0 0.1026 molar and it's not asking um, it, I mean it's it is specifically asking for the change and that's exactly what we calculated so we're good to go on that um, cool so we just have one more problem here um, and it is going to be this all right All right, consider the combustion reaction of propane. C3H8 plus 5O2 yields 3CO2 plus 4H2O. If the rate of formation of CO2 is 0 0.76 mole per second to the negative 1, find the following. This is the rate of consumption of O2, the rate of consumption of C3H8, and then the rate of formation of H2O. So first off, um, we'll start with part A. Um, we're going to have our, we're just going to plug it in to, to what we have for that formula there. Um, O2 is going to be over 5 because we have 5 O2, 5 delta T equals 1 third times 0 0.76 M minus to the negative 1 because we have that rate. And again, like you can compare any any two to each other because they're all they're all equal in terms of uh, because the the formula accounts for the, the mole ratios so that I think works out pretty good okay so we have here um, negative 1 over 5 X okay so we have negative 1 over 5 X and um, that's going to equal 0 0.2533. Now what we can do is we'll multiply both sides by 5 to get the negative 1x alone. So we have negative x equals 1.267. So now we have the ROC of O2 equaling we're going to flip the sign because negative x equals 1.267, x equals negative 1.267. 267, negative 1.267, and that's going to be ms negative 1. So we found our answer for part A. Now we'll go to part B. So part B is going to be the um, C3H8, so we'll have negative 1 over 1 times delta A 
change in A over change in T equals one third times 0 0.76 times, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, MS, negative one. All right, cool. So we're gonna get, sorry, negative X is equal to 0 0.2533. And that's again the negative x, so we'll just flip the signs, um, which means x equals 0 0.2533, and that's going to be m s negative 1. So that is the um, rate of consumption for C3H8. And then finally we'll go on to C, which I'll do over here. C is going to be, okay, so we'll start with one third times 0 0.76 ms negative one. And you, you don't have to always put it on the, the corresponding side to the equation um, of, of your equation, but I, I like to do it sometimes just because I feel like it helps keep the variable straight and, and understood, make sure you didn't flip anything by accident. H2O over change in time. Okay, so we'll multiply that out, rather divide. We get, okay, I got 0 0.2533, it's going to equal 1 fourth x. So now we just multiply both sides by 4, by 4. The rate of formation of H2O, it's going to equal 1.013 mol molar uh, times second to the negative one. All right, cool. So that is the uh, the basic process of these. I think it's a good exercise. I just wanted to, to run back to at the beginning we we talked about the graph. Um, so being able to graph them, it, it's kind of hidden under here, but um, but being able to graph these, I think, is a good idea. Just because you know it, it can't hurt it, you know to understand the the way that it would look graphically, especially for standardized testing. I know I've heard that a lot of testing companies are starting to push more for graphs and graphical questions and visual understanding of all these hypothetical concepts and stuff. So yeah, uh, hopefully this helps someone.